All right, virtual learners, this how-to video is going to be all about fraction decimal equivalents. This is a very, very important standard because this understanding fraction decimal equivalents is a prerequisite skill for um, comparing and ordering fractions and decimals for um, any kind of computation with fractions and decimals because a lot of times you see fractions and decimals at the same time or it is easier to change a fraction to a decimal or a decimal to a fraction if you have different um, if you have both decimals and fractions together it's easier to make them all look the same so a prerequisite skill to being able to do all of that kind of math is really understanding how every fraction can be written as a decimal and every decimal can be written as a fraction so i'm a math coach in virginia and in fourth grade students are expected to understand the fraction decimal equivalents for halves, fourths, fifths, and tenths with models. And in fifth, they are expected to remember all of those and then add in third, eighths, and factors of 100. So like halves, fourths, fifths, tenths, 25ths, and 50ths would also be factors of 100. So I'm going to start with the fourth grade ones. I'm just going to show you a way that you could teach those halves, fourths, fifths, and tenths the equivalents, okay? So over here, I have two of my go-to models. I have decimal grids and I have a beaded number line here. So we're going to start with halves, right? So I will first ask students halves. What does halves mean? Well, students know halves means two equal parts make a whole. Hopefully by fourth grade they know that. If not, guess what? We're going to teach them. So I can start with my beaded number line and say, okay, if I want to split this line in half, where would the halfway mark be? And you can either visually see it or some kids like to fold it in half to see that halfway mark right here and I can mark that off. All right, so now you can see the halfway mark on my beaded number line here. Now before we would be working on this beaded number line, we would have talked about what does each bead represent since there's 100 beads on the string, each bead is 100th of the whole. What would each group of beads represent? Well, each group of beads would be 1 tenth because 10 groups make the whole string. So I'm gonna be using those to figure out these fraction decimal equivalents, okay? So now I kind of showed it to you on a linear model. That's my half. I'm gonna also show it to you on a decimal. So I'm just gonna chop it right down the middle like I would a sandwich. Okay, now before I can even tell you what decimal this is, I have to have experience with this decimal grid before, which you should have done before you ever get to fraction decimal equivalents. You want students to understand that this piece, if this whole grid represents one whole, this piece is one hundredth of a whole because it's one out of a hundred parts that make a whole. And they need to know that this represents one tenth of the whole because ten of this size piece would make the whole. So students need to have a good understanding of tenths and hundredths before they um, are worrying about halves because they're going to need to use these pieces and build up these pieces to help them with the half. For example, if I know that this is one-tenth and I know that half is this much of my cake, well, do you see tenths in this half? How many tenths do you see in the half? Well, I can see one, two, three, four, five tenths. And guess what else I can also see? On my beaded number line, I can see one tenth, two tenths, three tenths, four tenths, five tenths. So if I want an equivalent for the fraction one half in decimal form, it's gonna be five tenths. We know that that's the same as a fraction. How do I write 5 tenths as a decimal? I have to make sure that 5 goes in the tenths place, which is right after the decimal point. So it can be 5 tenths, or I can write 5 tenths like this, or I might, it might look like this. This is still 5 tenths. And I do make sure that we talk about all those ways and how all of those are showing 5 tenths. So there is your decimal equivalent for 1 half, 2 halves. That's the same as a whole. All right, so let's go into fourth. 
and I'm gonna use that half to help me understand the fourths, okay? So if I wanted to make this cake in fourths, then I need to have four equal parts that make the whole. And guess what? If I take a half and I chop it each half in half again, I can see in each half is one fourth. So this is one fourth, this is one fourth, this is one fourth, and this is one fourth. Well, if I know that that half is five tenths, then half of five tenths, or some kids think of five tenths like five dimes or 50 cents, half of 50 cents is 25 cents. Guess what? One fourth is 25 hundredths. You can also see it here, one fourth, one, two, three, four, five, five of what size piece? Remember, the little pieces, this was one hundredth of the whole. So these are five hundredths. So if I shade in another five hundredths, that's ten hundredths. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five. And it's twenty-five of what size piece? What did we call this piece again? That was one hundredth of the whole. So this is twenty-five hundredths of the whole. So let's see how I can use, let me um, use the beta number line to show the same thing. So if I want fourths, that means that I need to take my whole and split it into four equal parts. Well, if I'm looking here at this half and I want half of a half, I split each half in half. So now I can see that I have one fourth, one fourth, one fourth, and one fourth. Four fourths makes a whole. So on my area model here, I had 25 hundredths. And then if I'm looking for one of the fourths on my beaded number line, I can still see 10, 25. And if each one is 100th, it's also 25 hundredths. So let's see all that we can figure out about fourths just from this model. We can see that one fourth is the same as 25 hundredths, okay? We can also see that two fourths what would that be the same as? Well, two fourths, if I had two fourths, that would be this one too, right? Two fourths, that's the same as the half, isn't it? And you do wanna talk about that stuff because when kids have to find those common denominators later when they're adding and subtracting fractions, understanding those equivalent relationships will be super helpful. So if two fourths is the same as a half, then that means that two fourths is also five tenths, right? All right. So I know one fourth, I know two fourths. I bet you I can even use the model to figure out three fourths. Let's think about this. If that's 25 hundredths, and that's 25 hundredths, and that's 25 hundredths, what is 25 plus 25 plus 25? If students don't know that that's 75 cents, a lot of students know from um, counting money, but if they don't, they can easily see by counting 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, and then five more at 75. So three fourths, that's the same as three one fourths, 75 hundredths. So you can see, see, just from the one fourth, if you build up that one-fourth, you can use the one-fourth to help you with equivalents for two-fourths or three-fourths. So it's not just about finding that equivalent for one-fourth, it's about finding decimal equivalents for all the fourths. Next we're gonna do tenths because it's easier and then we're gonna use tenths to help us with this. So for the next part in fourth grade, I'm, I usually go halves, fourths because I have the halves to get the fourths. And then they also need to know fifths and tenths, but fifths are um, usually harder for them to see with my model, so I usually start with the tenths, okay? So on this beaded number line, where are the tenths? Show me one tenth. Remember, one tenth means one part out of 10 equal parts that make the whole. So if there's 10 groups, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10 groups, then each of those groups represents one tenth, right? So I'm just gonna space these out. So now I've kind of spaced my bead and number, my whole number line out to kind of see each tenth. And at school, I might even write, my table's kind of dark, I don't know if that's gonna show up. Underneath each one, I might write, well, that's one tenth, that's one tenth of my whole. 
that's one tenth, and I can just write those unit fractions underneath there because we want students to understand that fractions are made up of unit fractions. And so then together, that makes 10 tenths is the same as one whole, right? Okay, so now you can see it on my number line. Let's see how that might look on a decimal grid. All right, I'm gonna go back to this guy because if students don't recognize one tenth on a grid, then they're not gonna be able to go much further. So one tenth, what does a tenth mean? If students get stuck, I always ask them, what does a tenth mean? Well, a tenth is one part out of 10 parts that make the whole, right? So this is one tenth because 10 of this size piece would make the whole. Okay, so if I'm talking about one tenth as a decimal, I can put one in the tenths place. That's one way that I can write one tenth as a decimal. Right? Now some students might also see this as ten hundredths. And you don't want to say they're wrong because they're, they're not wrong. Because remember, this was one hundredth. So isn't a tenth the same as ten hundredths? So you can talk about that. One tenth is also the same as ten hundredths. It's also, we could, if we write ten hundredths, well, isn't that one still going to be in the tenths place? Okay. So if that's one tenth, then to do two tenths, that's two one tenths. And I would kind of clip right here, right? So that would be two tenths, right? Here's two tenths. One tenth plus one tenth is two tenths, right? So if I'm gonna write that as a decimal, I need a two in the tenths place, okay? If I had six tenths, then I would just need six of them. One tenth, two tenths, three tenths, four tenths, five tenths, six tenths. So now I have six tenths on my area model. So there's my six tenths, right? If I'm gonna write that as a decimal, all I need is a six in the tenths place. Remember, six in the tenth place can also be this, six in the tenths place can also be that, as long as that's a decimal point, okay? Eight tenths, I guess what? You probably don't even have to see me model it because now you're noticing a pattern. If it's eight tenths, all I need is I just need to have an eight in the tenths place and then I have eight tenths. And you can have those discussions like, okay, if I have eight tenths, six, seven, eight, if I have eight tenths, how many hundredths is that? Isn't that a great question to ask students? Getting them to make those connections between those units is gonna help build their number sense. So that's six, seven, eight. There's your eight tenths or 80 hundredths, right? Students are having a hard time seeing the tenths. Sometimes I trace them out first instead of just shading. You can see there's tenths and eight of them are shaded. That's eight tenths, okay? So those are tenths. Now we're gonna use what we know about tenths to help us with fifths. Fifths are very challenging. All right, so if I have tenths, and I know tenths means that 10 equal parts make the whole, what would fifths look like? What is a fifth? Well, fifths would be five equal parts make a whole, right? So I would let students work with um, 100 grid, I would have them break this up into five equal parts. They have a hard time with it, but that struggle is a good struggle. Or use the beaded number line and see if they can find five equal parts. And a lot of times, um, they'll get to it through expiration. So let's just see. What if I put two of these tenths together? So take a look what I have here. Do you see my five parts that make my one whole? Here's one fifth, two fifths, three fifths, four fifths, five fifths. Five fifths would be the same as one whole. Remember, you can always write those unit fractions so students understand that two fifths is the same as two one fifths, or three fifths is the same as three one fifths. They do not automatically make that connection on their own. Some do, but a lot don't. Five fifths is the same as one whole. Okay, so now that I know that, I can see that fifths are larger than tenths, right? 
Let me try to use my grid to show this. Remember what a tenth looked like? Wasn't this a tenth? So how many tenths are in one fifth? I can see that there's two tenths, right? So I'm gonna use that to help me show fifths on my hundreds grid. All right, so I saw in my beta number line that two tenths was the same as a fifth. So I'm gonna draw a dark line here and then I'm gonna just test this out and see if this looks like fifths, okay? For every two tenths, I'm gonna draw a darker line and see if it looks like I'm splitting that cake into fifths or five equal parts that make the whole. I'm just gonna trace the outside of the cake too just so you can see. This is usually the hardest one for students to see in fourth grade. Can you see the fifths now? So here is one fifth. It's one fifth because it's one part out of one, two, three, four, five parts that make the whole cake. So when you look at one fifth, what does that look like as a decimal? So remember when we started, we knew that was one hundredth and this was one tenth, right? How can I use what I know about hundredths and tenths to help us with the decimal equivalent for a fifth? Do you see either of these in the fifth? Most students, they'll say, I either see 20 hundredths or I see two tenths. Well, let's use that for my one fifth. If I know one fifth is the same as 20 hundredths or it's the same as two tenths, if I write that as a decimal, I either need a two in the tenths place, that's two tenths, or if I write 20 hundredths, these are still the same, it's still two tenths, right? So one fifth is the same as two tenths, that's its decimal equivalent, right? So if one fifth is two tenths, then two fifths, what would two fifths be? Well, that's four tenths, right? So two fifths would be four tenths, or 40 hundredths, okay? Three fifths, that would be one, two, three, four, five, six tenths, or 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 hundredths, tenths, or 60 hundredths. So if I wrote that as a decimal, I just need a six in the tenths place, or I could do 60 hundredths like this, still the six is in the tenths place. All of these numbers here are equivalent, right? Four fifths is equivalent to eight tenths. I write that as a decimal, the eight just needs to go in the tenths place, right? You can think of it as 80 hundredths also. And then five fifths would be one whole, obviously. But the big one that you really wanna make sure that they understand is the relationship between the two tenths and the one. If they understand that one fifth is the same as two tenths, then they can remember one fifth is the same as two tenths, and then all other fifths can be derived from this unit fraction. So three fifths is the same as three one fifths. So if I wanted to know three fifths as a decimal, and I know each fifth is two tenths, then I know three fifths as a decimal would be six tenths. See how I can build up using what I know? So we talked about fourth halves, fourths, fifths, and tenths. Now I'm gonna get into um, some of the fifth grade ones that are a little trickier. Uh, thirds, eighths, and factors of 100, I'm probably not gonna do. The only new ones on factors of 100 are those 25ths and 50ths. Um, I'm gonna do thirds and eighths to show you guys how you can model thirds and eighths for fifth grade next. All right, so first thing I'm gonna talk about is how can I figure out one eighth as a decimal? My favorite way to do this is to use the decimal grids and use what we know about fourths already. So remember when we had fourths, that was four equal parts to make a whole. How can I turn a fourth into an eighth? Well, most students know that four plus four is eight or half of eight is four. So if I split each of my four, each of my fourths in half, 
that would give me two pieces here, two pieces here, two pieces here, and two pieces here. Wouldn't that be two, four, six, eight pieces? Let's use what we know about one fourth to help us figure out what would one eighth be. So remember, this is a fourth I can see from here. And I remember that a fourth was 25 hundredths because it was 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 hundredths size pieces. Remember that was one hundredth, so this is 25 hundredths. So I knew that one fourth is the same as 25 hundredths. Let me see if I can use that to help me figure out eighths. So here I am with my grid again, and I know that this area is a fourth, and I'm gonna chop it in half. But I have an odd number of units down here. One, two, three, four, five, you see that? So I'm in order to make it really be in half, I'm gonna have to chop each of these little hundredths down the middle. Okay, I'm gonna chop this fourth in half. I'm gonna chop this fourth in half. And this is why we build relationships between halves, fourths, and eighths ever since third grade, so that this idea doesn't seem so crazy to them by the time they get to fifth grade. So now I can see that I used to have fourths, but now I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight, eight equal parts, and so each of those parts is one eighth of the whole. Okay, now let me figure out how much would that actually be. So if I know that this is one hundredth, because it's one out of a hundred parts that make the whole, then let me see how many hundredths are in this eight. Let me see. One hundredth, two hundredths, three hundredths, four hundredths, five hundredths, Six hundredths, seven hundredths, eight hundredths, nine hundredths, ten hundredths. And I have these little half of a hundredths. Well, I know two halves makes a whole, so two half hundredths, that would be eleven hundredths, twelve hundredths, and then half of a hundredth, so like 12 and a half hundredths. That's weird, I'm just gonna write that down. 12 and a half hundredths. Oh, interesting. Next I go to the thousandths grid so we can think about what would 12 and a half hundredths, because I have 12 hundredths shaded in and then one more half of a hundredth. What would 12 and a half hundredths really be? Let me take a look on my thousandths grid. All right, so I can see that that's 12 and a half hundredths, right? And I can see that it's eighths because I cut it like that. But let's think about another way I can show 12 and a half hundredths. On this thousandths grid, this area represents one hundredth of the whole because this is one piece out of a hundred of that size piece that makes the whole. So if I want 12 hundredths, I need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve of that size piece. So let me get that Each down. Each of these pieces represents one hundredth of the whole. So this is ten, eleven, twelve hundredths. But I don't want twelve hundredths. I want twelve hundredths plus that last half of a hundredth, right? So if this is one hundredth, I'm going to take this hundredth here. But I don't want the whole thing, I just want half of it, right? Just want half. So now I have that half of a hundredth here. Now I have to think about that. I can see the 12 hundredths, but what are these little pieces called? I got one, two, three, four, five of these little baby pieces. What are those little baby pieces called? Well, let's think about this. That's one piece, there's 10 pieces here. So one out of 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. So if there's 100 of those tiny pieces in this row, how many on the whole thing? Let's figure that out. 100 here, 
plus another 100 here would be 200, plus another 100 here would be 300, 400, 500, 600, 700, 800, 900, 1,000. So this is one baby piece out of a thousand. So this represents one thousandth of a whole. So I don't just have one thousandth here. I have twelve hundredths and then I have five thousandths. So now how can I use that to help me write my decimal? Let's think about it. All right, twelve hundredths. In twelve hundredths, don't I have one tenth here? So one tenth, and then two hundredths left over, and then five thousandths. So this is twelve and a half hundredths, or one hundred twenty-five thousandths. So one eighth as a decimal is. 125 thousandths. There's a hundred thousandths there, there's 20 thousandths here, and there's five thousandths here. That's 125 thousandths. 125 thousandths. So if you know that one eighth is 125 thousandths, then you can use that to figure out other decimals for other eighths. So just for example, I'll do one more. If I knew that 1 eighth was 125 thousandths and I wanted to know what 5 eighths was, well remember 5 eighths is the same as 5 1 eighths Okay, so that would be 5 eighths is the same as this 5 times. Or I could be super slick and say, well, four eighths, isn't that the same as a half? And then one more eighth. So that means that five eighths is the same as five tenths and one tenth is six tenths. And then there you got your decimal equivalent for five eighths. And if you type this into the calculator, five divided by eight, it's gonna give you that too, but I just figured it out using math. I don't need a calculator. So if you know one eighth is 0.125 or 125 thousandths, then you can use that unit fraction to help you figure out non-unit fractions for eighths um, with a decimal for fraction decimal equivalent. Now the hardest part is thirds. Let's explore thirds. I usually use a much bigger one at school, but since we're at home and I don't have a bigger one, we're just gonna do the best that we can with a smaller one. So remember I had, um, I'm trying to cut this into three equal parts. I cannot easily split 10 into three equal parts because I can see 10 parts here. I can do the tenths, one tenth, two tenths, three tenths, four tenths, five tenths, six tenths, seven, eight, nine, ten tenths. I can't split 10 into three easily but I can split nine into three evenly. So let me think about that. I'm gonna just keep this 10th off for now. I'm not just gonna get rid of it because I still it still matters. But now that I'm looking at the remainder of it, I'm actually gonna cut this little 10th off. Now that I'm looking at the remainder of this, I can split this into thirds because I know if there's nine tenths, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine divided by three is three. So then three tenths would be a third of this size piece, right? I'm gonna go, up. but I don't want a third of this. I want a third of the whole thing, right? So, ooh, this is tricky. Let me just split this up first. I'm gonna cut these up and we're gonna figure out what to do next. I gotta do something with this leftover guy, right? Remember thirds. Let 
means that three equal parts makes a whole. That's what thirds are. So if my whole, and this is not really drawn very well, okay. So if my whole is split into three equal parts, then those parts are called thirds. Each of these would represent a third, right? So let me think about how I can take my grid or my cake and split it evenly into thirds. Well, this part can get a third. This part can get a third. And this part can get a third. But is it really a third yet? I still have this leftover guy here, right? So now I'm thinking about the same problem again. There's 10 hundredths in here. I can't split 10 into three equal parts. I can split nine into three equal parts. So just let me take off that extra one. It still matters, but I'm trying to get this three equal parts. Let me cut it off real quick. All right, so now this is what I see. This was what I had left over. And I couldn't break it up evenly again into three because 10 does not divide evenly in, by three. I couldn't divide it perfectly. I can divide nine into three or thirds and that would give me three little hundredths, but then I have that hundredth left. Well, let me at least split up those three equal parts here and see what we're working with. All right, so I got those little guys and I'm gonna bring it in here. Bring this one in here and bring this guy in here. Whew, so I still have this guy. I don't know what to do with him yet. He still matters, right? But let's think about how much do I have in each third right now. So if I remember back to the beginning when I was talking about fraction decimal equivalents, this size piece was one hundredth of the whole. And this size piece was one tenth of the whole, right? What do we see in each third? Well, I see three tenths and three hundredths. So I see three tenths and three hundredths. Or some might see 30 three hundredths, okay? So, so far, each third has 30 three hundredths. But that guy's still left. This is so annoying, y'all. I'm gonna have to split him into three again. Oh my goodness. Let's check this out. At this point, guys, I am just thinking that no matter how many times I try to split things into three, I'm always gonna have that problem with a leftover. Because even if I try to split this hundredth into three parts, let's go back to our thousandths grid, our big one. Remember this? So if I try to take a hundredth like this, and I try to split this into three equal parts, I'm gonna have the same problem. One, two, and then three. I'm gonna still have that one left over. So every single time I do it, I'm still going to have one left over that I'm going to have to split into three parts again, but then I'll have one left over that I have to split into three parts again, but then I'll, it's gonna go on forever. So at this point, usually what I do is I have students put one third into the calculator, one divided by three. And what comes up is that repeating decimal. So then I let them know that's why you have a repeating decimal because you could literally cut forever and no matter what, you would still have one part left. And when you try to split that part into thirds, there would always be one little piece left over. So one third is the same as 33 hundredths repeating, okay? Or about 0.33. So then if you wanna do one third and you know one third is that, then if you're trying to do two thirds, that's the same as two one thirds or plus repeating. So that would be the same as two thirds is the same as about. And you can type that into the calculator and you're gonna see that that's what it is. 
So thirds, I will, you can have a whole long fun day on eighths and thirds. Those are tricky decimals for decimal equivalents. But then once the students understand what is the decimal equivalent for one third and one eighth, they can figure out fraction decimal equivalents for halves, thirds, fourths, fifths, eighths, tenths. They're gonna be golden for when they start doing their fraction computation. Um, you gotta practice to get good. You can do matches after this, but you do wanna make sure that you're spending time with the models so students can understand where those numbers are coming from. Because if you have not gone through all these visuals and all of this partitioning and making things look like halves, fourths, fifths, tenths, thirds, and eighths, then students could, could just be memorizing how fractions look and how decimals look without having really any conceptual understanding about the size of those numbers and how they relate to each other. And then when they're doing something like three-fourths plus two-eighths with computation, fraction computation, first they're going to have to get the same size part. Well, guess what? If they know that a fourth is the same as two-eighths, then they know that they can make three-fourths into eighths. How many eighths? It would be six-eighths plus two eighths. And then that's six, seven, eight, that's eight eighths. Do you see how easy that is? That's one whole. Students don't get to the point where they can do that kind of thinking in their head if they don't understand those relationships, how halves and fourths and eighths relate, how fifths and tenths relate. So if you really want students to do computation and work with fractions with understanding, which is definitely important in algebra, then you want to give them experiences really building their understanding of equivalence. Let's try one more, like two-fifths and four-tenths. Well, let me think about this. What do I know about fifths? Well, I know that one-fifth is the same as two-tenths, right? So then if one-fifth is the same as two-tenths, two-tenths, Two fifths is the same as four tenths, and then four tenths plus four tenths, well, that's gonna be eight tenths. See how I can do that if I understand those relationships? If I don't understand those relationships, that's gonna be a beast for me. Another place this really comes in handy is comparing and ordering fractions and decimals. Say that I had 0.66 repeating or 66 hundredths repeating, one half, two tenths, and three fourths, and I had to order these fractions from least to greatest. I have to have number sense to be able to do this. Okay, so let me think about it. One half, that'll be right in the middle, right? So that's done. Three fourths, that's more than a half, right? Because you know, two fourths is the same as a half, so three fourths is more than a half. Two tenths. That's less than a half because five tenths is a half. Do you see how I wouldn't know that? And I'm gonna actually just rewrite this as a fraction. It's the same. And then when I order it up down here, I'm just gonna keep it as my decimal. So I'm done with that. Okay, that's 66 hundredths. I know 66 hundredths is more than a half because 50 hundredths is a half, but I'm not sure if this goes before three-fourths or after three-fourths. This is where this fraction decimal equivalence is very, very helpful. If I remember that one-fourth is 25 hundredths, then I know three-fourths is three twenty-five hundredths or 0.75, right? So now if I think of this as 0.75, because those are equivalent, this obviously is gonna go before the three-fourths. See how I needed to know my fraction decimal equivalents in order to be able to order up those fractions and decimals? What if I think of them all as decimals first? Because some kids like to do that. Let's take a look at how that might work. Right. It's not all about plugging in a calculator because plugging in calculators works your fingers, not your brain, okay? You want to build math minds, not math fingers, okay? So let's think about one half, remember one half is the same as five tenths, right? So if I wanna rewrite these all as decimals, I could think of it as five tenths, five in the tenths place, right? Two tenths, 
and 3 fourths, remember that 1 fourth is the same as 25 hundredths, so 3 fourths would be 3 of these for 75 hundredths. Okay, so now I took each of these fractions and I rewrote them all as decimals. It's still equivalent, but guess what? It's a lot easier to compare all decimals than fractions and decimals. No, this is easy, okay? Two tenths, done. Five tenths, done. In 66 hundredths, there's six tenths, and in 75 hundredths, there's seven tenths, so I know this would come next, and then this would be the greatest. That's easy to do if you have that number sense and that understanding of equivalence. It takes time to build in, it's very important, and putting in that work up front is going to really help students as they move into more advanced math. So don't skip it. Everyone can do math, you just have to know how to teach it. Thanks for watching.